This video is made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details. Nights and Bikes plays out like a retro coming-of-age movie. Overtly inspired by movies like The Goonies, it blends a touching story about childhood and loss with a wealth of environmental puzzles and light hack-and-slash combat. The developers at Foam Sword themselves also reveal some of the influences of the game as well, with Tearaway director Rex Kral at the helm bringing that same emotionally resonant yet playful style. The little things make Nights and Bikes memorable, which is great, especially in the face of overarching gameplay that is stable but never really wowing. First and foremost, the art and animation is breathtaking, driving home the childlike aesthetic of the adventure. Everything has a bounce to it that reminds me a little bit of the old Squiggle Vision animation style, and was spelled out as quote-unquote fizzy brushstrokes in a GDC talk by Kral pre-launch. The somewhat abstract art works even better because the whole game blurs the line of reality and fantasy, which funnels into the overarching narrative. Really, I've only ever played one game before that reminded me of this presentation, and that was actually Kral's previous game at Media Molecule, Tearaway. The two protagonists are heroines Nessa and Demelza, who become fast friends on the island of Penferzi. It's the end of the summer in the 1980s, and Nessa stows away in a boat to escape something to be explained later. Demelza's dad runs the island, which used to be a more vibrant tourist destination in the past, but is now in disrepair. Her mom recently passed away, which has made Demelza retreat more into a world of fantasy to cope. The duo go on adventures, riding bikes, solving puzzles, and fighting likely imaginary beasts. The story, without going into too much detail, has some heart-wrenching moments. Childlike optimism has a tough go in this game, even if Nessa and Demelza try to keep that spirit alive. Overall, the design is meant to be played in co-op. Each character has their own specific abilities. For example, Demelza dons a pair of rain boots early on, letting her stomp and splash water, while Nessa finds a frisbee that provides ranged attacks and functionality. The co-op experience is divine, because it requires true cooperation and communication to do effectively. The deeper you get, the more well-rounded each character gets as well. In part because the co-op is so well thought out, the single-player experience suffers. You can switch between each character at will, and the non-playable character is AI-controlled to solve puzzles and fight. The AI is good enough, but I had a few instances where I had to futz with character placement in order to get the other character to do what I wanted in tandem with my own actions. Nights and Bikes is totally playable by yourself, and that's how I primarily played it, but it reminded me of those times as a kid where I wandered around my backyard playing by myself, as opposed to with a friend. It's still fulfilling, but something's kinda missing. The early portions are extremely guided, and that kinda keeps up for most of the game, though you're given the keys to the kingdom, so to speak, in the later parts. Each character rides a bicycle around, seeking out island quests and rescuing villagers. An upgrade system exists, improving abilities, and also letting you deck out your bike in the finest 80s throwback styles. It's adorable yet unrefined, which is almost a mission statement for the entire game. Nights and Bikes is often reminiscent of classic video games, whether it's Secret of Mana or 2D Zelda, but it's a bit more janky than those inspirations. The combat is more button mashing than strategic, and the puzzles are a little more rough around the edges than some of Zelda's refined layouts. Part of that is because this is an indie Kickstarter game, though this seems almost deliberately a part of the storytelling. The division between reality and make-believe is blurred in this world, almost coming off akin to magical realism. The story gives reasons as to why these kids buy into their dreams, but also never totally classifies what's real and what's not. It's a really smart choice that helps make the game come together in a beautiful way. Ideally, you'll sit down and play through Nights and Bikes with a friend in the excellent co-op. If you find yourself in that potential situation, relish it like you would the end of summer before school starts again. If single player is the only way you'll be able to play Nights and Bikes, maybe take heed. Solo play is a less enjoyable experience, even if the overall charm and presentation is still wowing. Nights and Bikes is a fun video game, but it's optimally meant for two-player adventures. This video was made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more all for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.